them and I just want to say thank you and I'd, I'd like to tell you guys I'm honored to call you guys my parents and pastor I love you guys I really believe in you and I love you I was looking for a little scripture that I could go with and uh, find Proverbs 125 I believe I ain't quoted exactly right but you said not all my counsel and did none of my reproof and I, I'm so glad you kept counseling me even when I didn't really like it. And, uh, I didn't submit right then or I didn't even go with it right then. But uh, some, of, you know, some of the seeds you eventually dropped in my spirit fell on good ground and sprouted up life that I might help somebody else. So I didn't like all the counseling you gave me. <laughs> I put it up against, but it was always right. And it was always good. If I want to be anything, I want to be, I want to be able to sit under my pastor and let him submit to him whatever you got to feed me. Feed me the word. I tell you, you know, he's not only my pastor, he's everybody in here. You know, Brother Anthony goes. And I see him, like Sister Sheila said, at home and wherever he might go, he's the same. And I just love him to death. Love, love uh, Sheila and the boys. When I started coming here nine years ago, they wasn't this tall, but now I've got to look up to them. But I really want to know, thank him for all that he's done for me and my family. He's been there in death, like Sister said. He's been there at the birth of my grandbabies. And you know what? Not only him, but Sheila's right there with him. It might be 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. So it takes 
a friendship, a love that's beyond. It's what God has called them to do. Even when he was evangelizing, I know the boys, like he said, would get lonesome for friends. And it does happen. Uh, back when I was a little boy, I'd go uh, to meet friends and I'd have to leave them. And it would just tear me up. But today we got a pastor that will leave the 99 and go catch the one. And we got a pastor that'll preach the truth to us, whether we like it or not. But he's preaching from the word. And as long as he's preaching from that word, I'm going to get up. And he made me emotional, God did. And I'm going to tell God how glad I am to have a pastor that will preach the word of God to me and keep me from going astray. You know what? That's what the church needs today. We need shepherds to stand behind that pulpit and preach the holy anointed word and the anointed word. And I see him. And I look over my wife and I say, he's in the anointing. I know the anointing. I feel the anointing. I thank God for the anointing. And I thank God for my pastor and his wife and family. I tell you what, church, you go a long way. You'll not find a family and a man that's dedicated and sold out to Jesus. You know, I, like I told him two or three weeks ago, devil, I'm not for sale. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I love Jesus, and I love my pastor, and I love my friends here. This week, I went through another surgery on Monday. I told pastor, I said, pastor, I told the Lord, I present this body, Lord, holy and acceptable to you. That's my reasonable service. Yes, it's been a rough 2011, but he's still God. He's still God. And we still got to keep going on. And all the phone calls and all the prayers, I tell you what, my wife, people look at me and say, why don't you pastor? I said, uh-uh. I'll preach, but he called me to pastorship yet. Because I tell you what, I've been there and seen what goes on. But I know this man, I see his walk. Hey, we're not all perfect. We strive to be perfect. But I thank God today for my pastor and all of you. God's given me and my wife a family that I believe I could call you at 3 o'clock in the morning and you'd be there for me. That's the way he is. He loves us. And no greater love that he had a man lay down his life for you. I believe he'd actually lay down his life for us because he's preaching us the truth. And I thank God for the truth. You know the truth will set you free. <laughs> I love him today, and I love his family, and I love my church family. I couldn't go anywhere in this town or in this state to find a better loving church the more God's put me and planted me. You know what? I thank God for that. I could be somewhere where I wasn't getting fed. We ought to thank God every day. Brother Anthony tells us we ought to thank him in the bad times. He says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of the Lord. So I thank him. <laughs> This morning that I came out of that room, but when I was standing there in that, going to the operating room, there stood my pastor, and there stood his wife. That means a lot to me, church. He'll go true and far with you, and I love him today, and I want him and his wife and boys to know that I take my last breath. I want to stroll over heaven with them. That's what God's called us all to do. Let's make it home. Let's I, I asked myself that day, and I don't want me to take much time. Sometimes I catch myself, I might grumble a time or two. I don't need to grumble and complain because he's my savior. He's my deliverer. He's my soon coming king. And to him, everything's made. And everything in him, we move, we walk, we breathe. And I thank God for this church and what he's doing across the broadcast. You know, even me, I go every, everywhere and I say, I've seen you on TV. I said, yeah, my pastor's preaching the word. I let them know who my pastor is. I spread him like mayonnaise all over this Tennessee Valley. And ain't nothing no better than mayonnaise on a tomato sandwich. Amen? And I love him. I give, let's give him a hand clap of praise. We've been in the spirit of revival. Can we all stand and just worship Lord? Please, would you sing, Let It Rain? I was sure affected by the revival this week. It starts back tonight, Brother Bill, tomorrow night, Paul. Tuesday night, Brother Daniel. So, let's, let's just worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Get, thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you.
got something a little bit different for you this morning. But uh, I think that when you think about the uh, words to this song, Brother Anthony is is the reason that uh, for this song, in a way, if you'll think about it, after I started. the spiritual gun Well the devil thought he had us but the table's been turned and now he's on the run The devil's in the phone booth Dialing 911 My life has changed uh, Since the Lord sent me uh, I proclaim the mighty name of Jesus Christ to everyone that I see you know the keys to the kingdom are the secret to success. To lose the Holy Ghost in the sun, the devil's in the phone booth. Come on. 911. Well, the devil's in the phone booth. I be dial 911. The church is on their knees and they're loading up their spiritual gun. Well, the devil thought he had us, but the table's been turned. And now he the devil's in the phone booth. Nine and nine one one. What in the world do you want? There's nothing here for me. Jesus save me, sanctify me. Now the Holy Ghost has set me free from the things of the world that were looking mighty good. The devil lied and said they were fun. The devil's in the phone booth. He dialed at 911. The church is on their knees and they're loading up the spiritual gun. Well, the devil thought he had us, but the table's been turned. And now he's on the run. The devil's in the phone booth. Dial at 911. Yeah, the devil's in the phone booth. He dialed at 911. Churches on their knees and they're loading up the spiritual gun. Well, the devil thought he had us, but the table's been turned. And now he's on the run. The devil's in the phone booth. Dial a 
But anyway, the fall festival, which is the 12th, and that's on a Saturday, it's two weeks, um, and uh, it'll be from 11 till 4, and 12 being our dinner time. But please come, and it's a good day of fellowship. Yeah, we had some friends coming in from Mississippi. They enjoyed it so much last year, and they are coming back this year and bringing some friends. So your kindness has touched their heart. But uh, seniors, uh, just uh, be patient with us, and we will check and get back with you. So remember, the 12th is the fall festival. Let our, let our children dismiss to their classes. just to, to win the lost or to uh, win those or draw those that's out of church, but also to be to revive the church, to renew the church. Like a husband and wife renewing their vows. It ought to be to revive us, to make us alive again, to stir the fire again, kindle the fire again. So we're starting all over tonight. And you can just, just feel a fresh touch and a fresh stir. One, one of the scriptures that I've loved for a lot of years is, Wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Great, and, and you can dig into that a lot of different ways. I believe that witness is talking about our loved ones Amen. that have lived for God. Our loved ones that have run this race, our loved ones, our friends, our patriots, our, our ancestors in the body of Christ, our Pauls, our moms, our families that have run this race with patience, that have stayed true to God. Where does my, our, our loved ones don't go to the grave. The Spirit goes back to God who gives it. That's the Bible. The Spirit goes back to God who gives it. So when the anointing comes, when the Lord comes, we're foreseeing, we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. I get my little whiny storms and battles. Think I can't make it through this. Paul said, I was beat and I went on. I was stoned and I just got up and went on. Hallelujah. We're foreseeing, we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which does so easily beset us. We don't mean to. It's easy to pick up a lot of things in this journey. It's easy to let our hearts get a little cold. It's easy, it's easy to just, just, to, just to get overstressed or overinvolved in some battles or some storms. It's easy to pick up a little unforgiveness, a little hurt, a little anger, just, 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 just coldness. Neglecting church, neglecting reading our Bible, neglecting prayer. We're for sin we're compassed about. With so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience. Let us run with patience. Uh, uh, cars about 75 years ago, they had a granny gear in them. They didn't have paved, paved roads everywhere. They had a lot of muddy roads. He'd get down where you couldn't go 30 miles an hour and you'd put down in granny gear. Anybody here to granny gear? Bulldog. You put down and you just keep going. The church, the church, we can't run fifth gear wide open all the time. Some of these roads are treacherous. 
Some of these cliffs are steep. Some of these valleys are deep. You just got to gear down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We may be crawling a little bit, but I'm going on. Hallelujah. May not be, you may outrun me, but I will catch up. Hallelujah. Weeping man near for night, but joy cometh in the morning. So wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience. And I found, I found a little song that will preach about half of my sermon. and This song spoke me way into the night last night. But let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. Let us run with patience this race. Looking on to Jesus. He's the author, and he's the finisher of our faith. Through, through this little old song, I, song I, I see something about, we preached about why the Lord would challenge Abraham to give up his son. And through this song, it just makes me look at it, uh, just speaking to my heart this morning. Abraham prayed for the day that God would give him a son and blessed Isaac was his name the greatest gift he ever known then came the day Who would have dreamed God would say give him Back to me Now on this mountain You will prove It's you and Isaac or it's me and you and when I lay my Isaac down a broken heart but my father's proud and on this altar where he lay just to find God didn't want him God wanted me and most of us I dare to say we have an Isaac that stands in God's way but on this all God will prove it's not your Isaac God wants God wants you and when I lay my Isaac down a broken heart would you worship the Lord with me my father's proud My eyes down. Find that God didn't want him, he just wants you. And when I lay my eyes down, I'll have a broken heart, but my father will be proud. And on this altar, here he lays. It wasn't him that God wanted. God wanted you, Abraham. Prayed for the day that God would give. 
him a son and blessed Isaac was his name the greatest gift he had ever known then came the day who would have dreamed oh god would say give him to me now on this mountain you will prove it's you and isaac or it's me and you friend we can't have both of them and when I lay my Isaac down, a broken heart, but my father's proud, and on this altar here he lays, just to find it wasn't him. God wanted me, and most of us, I dare to say, all we have an Isaac that stands in God's way, but on this altar God will it's not your Isaac God wants God wants you would somebody stand up and say deal with me and when I lay my Isaac down a broken heart but my father's proud and on this all It wasn't him that God wanted. He wanted me. And most of us, I dare to say, all we have an Isaac standing in God's way on this all. God will prove it's not your Isaac he wants God just wants you and when you lay your Isaac down you'll have a broken heart but a father proud and on this altar Isaac lays Just to find it wasn't him God wanted you Abraham prayed for the day Oh God would give And blessed Isaac was his name The greatest gift he had ever known Then came the day who would have dreamed Oh God would say give him to me I like this next part now on this mountain you will prove it's you and Isaac or it's me and you and when I lay my 
classic down for a broken heart but a father's proud and on his altar there he lays just to find it wasn't Isaac God wanted me Oh, and most of us I dare to say All we have and Isaac Standing in God's way But on this little altar Our God will it wasn't your Isaac God wanted, He wanted you. Oh, when I lay my Isaac down, oh, a broken heart, but my father's proud, and on this altar, here he lays it wasn't him God wanted God wanted you hallelujah 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 Lord will anoint me just a few minutes to preach on this The Lord wants you. I was working a little job at Deer Cell. And I was in a little church at little church at Farner. And we were having a little homecoming service and different ones was preaching five or ten minute sermons. And as a young man, I was about twenty twenty one at that time. 1920 and the young man stood up crying and he said this thought's been going through my heart for several days it's where Jesus sent over and had a little old colt tied up in a another he sent over and he told him he said tell him to loose him and let him go the master hath need of him America we think it's enough to quit sinning quit drinking and drugs come to church and pair ties, go to church and live good. We think that's acceptable. And that's all that millions will do. But the Lord hath needed some Joshua's that'll go beyond the camp. The Lord, he didn't hate the other three and a half million, but he needs some Joshua's. And there's one little scripture that says, Joshua, he wouldn't depart. He wouldn't leave. We, we have millions of precious, precious average Christians. But we need some men and women who go beyond the call of duty. We need, I know we, we preach Jesus, unshakable, unmovable. We preach him as a rock. That will never change. We preach him as a God in whom there's no variableness. We preach him as the God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I like all that. But for one moment, could I preach the other side? Could I tell you about a thirsty king? Can I tell you about Jesus that raises the dead and walks on water and he sits down on the well because he's weary and he's thirsty for a journey and a little woman walks up and he says, will you give me a drink? And she says, sir, I have nothing to draw out of and the well is deep. Can I tell you about a king that gets thirsty sometime? Can I tell you about King David? This is a king that's killed Goliath. 
This is a king that's killed bears and lions. This is a king that's afraid of no enemy. This is a king that had so much integrity when Saul has troubled him and tormented him and he knows he's promised the throne and Saul lays there asleep and all he has to do, he's already been anointed by Samuel. All he has to do is cut his throat, pick up the crown and walk away. And David steps back and he says, I'll not touch the Lord's anointed. If you've called me to be the next king, you're going to have to do it. I'm of such integrity. But can I tell you about this same king? He whoops nations. He, he tires down Philistines. But one night in the garrisons, the enemies all around him, and David stood there, and hundreds of soldiers around him. In fact, tens of thousands of his own soldiers are around him. And he's got his 40 mighty men around him. And David stood there, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't play him the harp and crying, the Lord is my shepherd. And he wasn't standing there quoting from the rising of the sun till the going down of the same. All his name is worthy to be praised. And he wasn't standing there and quoting some out of Psalms 37. The Bible declared that he was tired and David stood there and he didn't scream it or holler it three of his mighty men heard it and he said my heart panted there I thirst for a drink from the waters of Bethlehem enemies all around me I'm just tore up no but it looks like I'm going under this time and I'd sure like that you could preach this two or three ways and he said I'd sure like to have a drink of clean water and pure water and the, the 10,000 didn't do it and the 100,000 didn't do it 37 of the 40 mighty men didn't do it but three men poked elbows and they said you know the enemies all around us and I've got, I've got a three year old at home and you've got a ten year old and you're just married you know and you just spent one year with your wife and you're finally released you're back in battle and you understand if we crawl through these foxholes to go get our king a drink one of us will probably die we need some folk that love him more than their life we need somebody we need somebody Hallelujah. We think Isaacs are only a needle in our hand or an adulterous or fire. We think Isaacs are only something that's horrible. But you read the book of Isaac. Hallelujah. He was his precious son. There wasn't nothing ugly about him at this time. He wasn't a conniver or trickster at this time. He was his son. I don't know how to preach this. This is, this is pastor's appreciation. I feel so good. But this is, we're in revival. The devil don't always use ugly things to pull us away from the Lord. Sometimes there's little old Isaacs that just gets our life too busy. I wish somebody would worship him a little bit. Sometimes it's just Isaac that consumes your life. And I believe the master, I felt it for about the last 12 hours, I believe the master is walking through Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle, said, could I find a man or a woman that would go to me with yonder's mountain? Sir, I will not understand you. You can't even take her with you. Your own family, your servants that you love, you're going to have to leave them at the foot of the mountain because they're going to think you done crazy and you've gone too far and you become a lunatic and you're becoming a Jesus fanatic or something and people laugh at you. Could I find me an Abraham that'll go to yonder's mountain and say, I love you more than this blessing. That's the way I want to preach it. I don't want to preach it so much as a son. Sometimes God blesses us with a job and it's more important than God. Sometimes God blesses us with things we enjoy it, it becomes more important than God. Sometimes God blesses us with friends and we let them take the place of God. Sometimes God gives us good stuff and we get so consumed in it. God don't really want that. He wants you. Yeah. Hallelujah. It wasn't that God wanted all of Isaac. God wanted all of Abraham. I wish I might have a I wish somebody lift your voice and say deal with me in this service oh God. And understand, I'm not, I'm not preaching to everybody this morning, but I feel like I am talking to somebody. And the three mighty men looked around. They said, everybody thinks David just wants us to win the battle. And everybody thinks David just wants us to get up when they blow the trumpet. But there's only three of us that's heard the heart of our king. Our king wants a drink. I'm not sure... That everybody in the land's hearing the heart of God right now. I'm not sure that everybody's listening now. But I think somebody's going to hear. And somebody's going to listen. And they probably went and camouflaged and put on dark, I don't know. And they started crawling. And they almost get caught. If you and I lay down our eyes, like we can go shout every day. A broken heart, but a father proud it's going to cost us to give up that that we've got attached to 
It's going to cost us to give up that that's brought us laughter. All I'm pre- why are you preaching? All I'm preaching is he want nothing in your life more important than him. That's all I'm preaching. He don't want you to want nothing more than you want him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got time. Would anybody stand to your feet and say, God, touch me. That nothing in my life would be more important to you than to me than you, Jesus. Would anybody tell him that? Oh, God. I, I'm not backslid. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not out in the world. I'm somewhere in between. Somewhere in between the solid rock and the sinking sand. I'm not on fire like I used to be. I'm not consumed with the passion like I used to have. I'm not burning with the desire to be your friend like Abraham used to have. The very thing you give him, it's replaced you. You give him this eyes because he wanted a son so bad. Now instead of spending time with you, it's all about Isaac. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Somebody lift your voice in this house. Charles Spurgeon said a hundred years ago, the world has yet to see what can God can do with a man or a woman who want God and live for God and give themselves totally to God. Is there a young person in this room that would totally commit yourself to the Lord? Is, is there a little cold tied to the fence? And I hear the master cry, loose me and let me go. Oh, we've got to loose from drugs and we've got to loose from whiskey and beer. And we don't curse no more. And we don't gamble no more. And we don't fight no more. But we've got some Isaacs. And Isaac looks good in the crowd. Nobody thinks nothing wrong with Isaac. But the only thing is we love him more than we love God. God. We love him more than we do our prayer time. We love him more than we do our Bible study time. We love him more than we do going out and picking up the wounded and the bruised and the broken. Somebody, somebody's life could go to another level if they'd bring your Isaac to the altar and say, God, I'm wrestling, I'm in a warfare, but I don't want to love anything more than I love you. And I don't want to be attached to anything more than I'm attached to you. Three mighty men broke through. And they get back to Bethlehem. Take a little goat skin canteen perhaps. And they fill it full of that crystal clear water. And they bring it back. David's been back here drinking old stale muddy water whatever. A little lime in it. A little sulfur. And he looks at that water. And his little old tired body feels some strength. The king of Israel. The king of the greatest nation in the world. And he feels a stir. He says, this is going to renew me. And then he looks in the eyes of those mighty men. And he realizes, I didn't command you to do this. I didn't force you. Actually, I didn't even ask you. You got so close to me. You hear the cry of my heart. You got so close to me. If I think of the different disciples. I think about the boldness of Peter. I think about he'll get so close to God that there'll be healing in his shadow. I, I, I think of the strength of some of the others. And I look at little old John. John got so, I don't read a lot of miracles in John's ministry. I don't read a lot of signs and wonders. One thing stands out. John got so close he'll lay his head over on his bosom and he'll hear his heart beat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got a pity cost to grief. We want signs and wonders and miracles. We want hallelujah. 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 I don't know when I've enjoyed a revival more than I enjoyed this one. And and, and when Daddy was preaching, I got to take it. I remember I, I always liked Ronald Reagan. I just I just liked Ronald Reagan. And I stood not far from the courthouse steps when Ronald Reagan was there. And uh, and I and I remember looking at him. And I'm growing up, I knew all the stories of J. Edgar Hoover and from the peak and the detective agents on up to the beginning of the Secret Service. And I read and I just really liked all that. And, and I remember the different helicopters coming into to Athens where they brought the president in case they'd bombed one. I remember they had more. I remember they, they, 
unload him under a tent so nobody, so no stopper or nothing could, could get a shot at him. And all that excites me. And I remember looking through the crowd and trying to find the secret services with their little old earphones in and trying to, and I remember seeing some of them on the buildings with guns and all. And, and that's the way we do revival. Jesus shows up and we get more excited about somebody getting the Holy Ghost and we get more excited about the secret service and we get more excited about Air Force One and we get more excited about the president's limousine that nobody notices Ronald Reagan. We're just excited about everything that comes with him. I believe that's why a lot of churches lose the spirit of revival instead of concentrating on the one that walks in the place, on the one that brings revival. They start getting excited about a preacher calling somebody out and this many got saved and this many got touched. And this. But if we're going to have real revival, we're going to have to realize it's not about our force one and it's not about the secret service. We're going to have to honor him. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him a praise. in the If we want to keep the spirit of revival, Bible. It can't be about who's preaching or who's singing or who's testifying or how many got saved. It can't be did we shout tonight, did we speak in tongues tonight. If we want to keep Jesus in our midst, it's got to be about Jesus. Hallelujah. We got to honor him. We got to recognize him. We got, hallelujah. And we make him so big, we forget he's got desires. And we make him so big, we forget. Hallelujah. Can, can I preach a little rough for a minute? Jerry, you're married to an angel. Not, well, I'm getting too personal. But when he had his other surgery, John, I was over one day and Joanne was real tired. And she said, Brandon, I'm feeding him and take care of him. And he said, Joanne, there's a thread in the floor. Would you go get that? <laughs> I've laughed at that. And, and she was doing everything for him. But if we're not careful, if we're not careful, we turn around. We get in crowds and we neglect those that give their life to us. And a little wife will go home and say, Jerry, you talk, anybody hear what I'm preaching now? If we're not careful, we neglect this one. He gives so much to us. He pours so much out to us. He died for us. And I don't, I don't want to just think about his blessings, his touch, his miracles. I want to learn to love him. I want to learn to appreciate him and to praise him. And, and he's jealous. People don't like me. People fuss at me when I preach this. He's jealous. And, and jealous that's out of toe. If, if Sheila wasn't a little bit jealous of me, I think she didn't like me. I don't want her going off and getting no hammer and beat me up, you know. <laughs> keep, that, keep that thing in check. And you know what jealousy comes from? It comes from God. God, God, Paul said, I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. He don't want you loving anything or anybody more than you love him. And we think it's only ugly things that get us away from him. But sometime, and this is new to me, this is, this is fresh in my spirit, but sometimes it's not the pharaohs and the, it's not the, the herds that pull us away from him. Sometimes it's our Isaacs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. David turns around and he looks at those three mighty men. He said, what's going on, friends? What's going on? They said, David, we heard you last night. We saw the tears that others didn't see. Oh, we saw you walk out here with your crown and say, we'll win. We always win. We'll overcome. But we followed you back to your tent. We saw you lay your robe side. We saw you take off your crown. We saw you wipe a tear and turn your eyes back east. We heard you say, I'd sure like to have a drink from home. And David, we risk our lives. We risk not seeing our babies grow up and holding our own wives because we love you and you're our king. And here, David, is your water. David reached and got it and he opened it and he looked at their eyes. He said, I can't drink this. I wonder if in the book of Joel in the last days, saith God, I'll pour out. I wonder if some of that could be reserved for a little old miniature group, a little old remnant group. Hallelujah. Not, not the whole army. But just a small remnant who will go beyond the call of duty and say whatever it takes to satisfy our king. Whatever it takes to appease our king. Whatever it will take. I will willingly lay my Isaac down. Hallelujah. And David turned and poured it on the ground. I could preach about this for a long time. I've got a lot of scriptures. 
And Abraham rose up in the morning, took the two young men with him and Isaac, his son, and he clay the wood in the burnt offering. He rose up and went on to the place that God had told him. Would you stand to your feet and would you bow your head? I, I just want to give an altar call. If anybody wants to come to this altar, hallelujah. Anybody make your way to this altar just right before we dismiss. Just tell him, Lord, I, I, I'm bringing some Isaacs. I've got too many irons in the fire. I've got discouraged. I've got weary. And I, I'm bringing some Isaacs to this altar. And I'm returning to you. I'm coming back to you. Let's make your way to this altar. I, I feel like asking some folk just, just to ease to this altar today and say, Lord, I'm, I'm bringing some eyes.